Welcome back, everybody, to the 1987 Supermod. I am Brad Drake, and this is my AWA save. Folks, we're moving along here. We're in the second week of September. It's a Saturday night, and we're cruising back home to Minneapolis. We just left St. Paul the previous evening, had a very successful Friday night show, and now it's Saturday night, and we are home in Minneapolis and planning to have ourselves another big show. Something I noticed that uh, you might find interesting that I didn't catch at first. Manny Fernandez just won the NWA U.S. heavyweight title, and now he is injured with a damaged Achilles tendon. So this is going to be interesting to see what uh, Crockett Promotions does with the U.S. title now. I bet you Lex Luger ends, back with the, ends up back with the title. So let's get moving forward here and get into our card. We're going to have to find ourselves a nice venue here in Minneapolis. So let's go a little bit larger here. Even though the Minneapolis Auditorium does the trick for us, we are going to sell out the Minneapolis Auditorium, folks. All right, we don't have any backstage incidents. Shockingly, let's see who's missing. Uh, nobody to note except for Mr. Saito. Let's see if Mr. Saito is on the card. Ah, he was. He's choosing New Japan over us. That's not good. Well, what are you going to do? We'll uh, we'll get him a sub. So our main event is going to be the Midnight Rockers versus the Midnight Express. We're going to have a surprise opponent's opponent for Bob Backlund. Rip Oliver is going to lock horns with Jerry Lawler, Sheik Adnan, LKC. We'll mix it up with the legendary Ray Stevens, Colonel De Beers, and Jerry Blackwell are going to get ugly. Ali Khan is going to face DJ Peterson. The Top Guns are going to climb into the squared circle against the Texas Hangman. And opening us up is going to be Vivian St. John versus the dangerous Reggie Bennett. Yes, this is a new card, and we're seeing some fresh faces against each other. And let's have some fun, folks. Let's get to booking here. So our first match, as we said, is a ladies' match. St. John versus Bennett. It's going to be a 10-minute opener. And we're going to let this one rip. I don't, uh, I don't mind who wins this one. Next match, as we said, is going to be the Top Guns versus the Texas Hangman. That's going to be a 12-minute bout. This will be interesting to see. Uh, I'm excited to see both these teams get into the ring against somebody new. They both need the experience against different opponents. And we'll see how it goes. We still have not gotten a manager for the Texas Hangmen, even though we've said repeatedly we're going to. Uh, let's see if I don't pull the trigger on that soon. Maybe we'll par partner uh, pair them up with LKC like we talked about, but we'll see. All right, Ali Khan is going to battle DJ Peterson. Peterson just had that very successful run with Kevin Kelly. And just as we were finishing it up, Kevin Kelly gets hurt in that $20,000 battle royal. So it was very disappointing for us. So I'm starting to go nuts there, trying to figure out where Peterson was at. <laughs> and there he was. Uh, we are not going to set a winner for this one. We'll see how this one goes. And here we go. De Beers versus Blackwell. We have to see how these two uh, pair up here. I, you know, I learned something that I didn't know. I was adding the NWA Missouri heavyweight title into the Supermod database, and we've talked before about how the NWA Missouri title was like the precursor to who was going to win the NWA World Heavyweight title. That was a very prestigious title. A lot of huge names held that belt, including uh, Ric Flair, Dory Funk Jr., Harley Race many times, all three of the Von, major Von Erich brothers held the title. So, I couldn't help but notice that Jerry Blackwell held that title twice. 
And one time he had a pretty lengthy reign for that title. He held it for about eight or nine months. So who knows? Maybe Jerry Blackwell was uh, that highly favored and thought of, or it could have been towards the end of the run there when um, maybe the title wasn't so prestigious anymore. But who knows? So here we go. We got De Beers and Blackwell, and we'll see how this one goes. De Beers had a real nice feud with Slaughter there. That was successful for both of them. Al KC is going to get in the ring with Ray Stevens. And we're going to leave this one open-ended again, too, folks. We'll see how it goes. As we know, uh, Adnan LKC is a very capable hand in the ring. And Ray Stevens, according to Ric Flair, is the greatest of all time. Both had cool, both have cooled momentum. This feud will help them. I don't know how Stevens has got cooled momentum. He just won that $20,000 battle royal. Come on. Rip Oliver is going to step in with Lawler. And we are going to make sure that Lawler goes over here. And there shouldn't be any complaint from Rip Oliver. I'm not sure how many matches we got left with Lawler. We may have to do that, uh, that deal again soon. We'll take a look after we close out this card. All right, who are we going to put in there against Backlund, everybody? What do you think? Let's take a look at our heel card. You know what? Let's put Sheiky Baby in there. Yeah, let's put Sheiky Baby in there. We'll do another uh, technical match. And these two should get a good score especially in Minneapolis. So there we go. We're booked up. That should be one hell of a match, Sheik versus Backlund. For those of you that don't know, back in, I think it was late 1983, because Hogan won the title, I think, in January of 84. So it was... The Iron Sheik that took the title from Bob Backlund with the camel clutch and Bob Backlund's manager threw in the towel. All right, our main event is our Midnight Rockers versus the Midnight Express. This is another match we've kept. Um, it's been a great feud for us, so we should just keep it going. And this match, we are going to put the Midnight Rockers over by DQ. We're going to let it go 30 minutes, too. There I go again. All I got to do is go right here. <laughs> I'll learn eventually. You know, the problem is when you're sitting in my position, you're doing this, you're not just playing the game. You're worried about sound quality. You're worried about all these other factors. So you your mind kind of drifts and you just go to basic, uh, you know, mechanical routine for your body. <laughs> so that's why you end up missing out on stuff like this. But uh, it'll get there. I'll continue to improve just like everything else. Let's put Shawn Michaels over. Epic. And we got to make sure to do a DQ here. So there we go. Uh, who's being used again? Too much. Marty Miller, again. We're killing this poor guy. Let's give the main over to Jim Mitchell. All right, there we go. A little bit over two hours. Two hours and 22 minutes to be exact. And let's let it rip here. And let's see how we're doing. Very low score, but that's okay. Both these women are pretty new to the territory. And uh, St. John got the win over Reggie Bennett. All right. Top guns over the hangman with that patented Ricky Rice drop kick. You know, I was watching a video uh, just the other night of Ricky Rice after 
it was like 89 after John Paul had left the promotion and Ricky Rice was starting to tag with Derek Dukes. And Ricky Rice could get up there with that uh, drop kick. He was, he was a really talented guy. He was a talented athlete, and he looked terrific. So there we go, low score. But again, the popularity is just going to continue to grow for, for both these teams. So Khan versus Peterson. Peterson gets the win. I would expect that to be the case. Excellent. De Beers and Blackwell get a good score here. Nice. I don't know how Blackwell's only getting a 68 in Minneapolis where he's most popular, but you know, that's a story for another time, I guess. But a uh, really good score here for this match. It's a lot more than what I expected. And Blackwell, that's two drop kicks in a row, but uh, we'll let it fly because Blackwell's a 400-pound guy doing it. You know, I worked with a guy that looked exactly like Jerry Blackwell, and I nicknamed him Jerry. He's like, why are you calling me Jerry? I go, because you look exactly like Jerry Blackwell. I go, can you do a drop kick? And he's like, no. So I continued to call him Jerry or Blackwell or JB and all the way up until when he retired. So a little side story on me and about how I bring classic wrestling into my personal and professional life. So here we go. Sheik Adnan LKC versus Ray Stevens. This is a match you could have seen probably in 1969, but we're seeing it here in 1987. And Stevens gets the win with a bombs away. And pretty nice score, 79 for this match. In fact, really good score for these two. Let's see if, uh, yeah, LKC is not showing his age yet, but Stevens is. So that's a, uh, that's a good score here. I'm very pl pleased with that. LKC do does what LKC does best, and that's take the loss in favor of the babyface hometown hero. All right, real nice score here for Lawler and Oliver. Look at that. Lawler's putting up a 90 in Minneapolis. Wow. Nice score. Good match. Now, see, this one makes sense. 60, 90, 81. Makes total sense. Here we go. Bob Backlund taps out Cheeky with the cross face chicken wing. 89, 76, 82 overall. Really good score. Let's hope Saido's back for the next match between him and Backlund. And this was a good match. This has turned out to be a really good card. Let's see what our main event does, folks. 86. Very good. It continues to gain heat. Excellent. This is a nice card. A nice overall card. Sellout crowd of 10,000 in Minneapolis. That's a huge draw for the AWA in 87, who's still trying to crawl out of the cellar. And we are no longer on life support, folks. We're up and walking around the hospital. So it's only a matter of time before the AWA gets its strength way up and walks right out of the hospital. All right, let's finish up here. I am pleased. That's a nice 82 score overall. Increased our popularity. We got to give some credit to Shiki and Colonel De Beers and Bob Backlund. I think all three of these people shown on this one. Or shine, shown, however you want to put it. Shiki's a good example. Compliment to Beers. And praise Backlund. Make the speech. We made the speech. Shiki's happy. The Beers is happy. And Bob Backlund is happy. All right, folks. We're going to bring it right back to the main page. Let's see what else is going on in the wrestling world. As you can see, I went ahead and updated this with the proper tour numbers. So that's good. Telling you, I like to keep things neat and clean here. Makes life a lot easier. Next, we're traveling to Green Bay. Steve Gatorwolf is leaving the WWF. I'm sure that definitely breaks their hearts. Championship wrestling up to 1.4 million viewers. Terrific. Who needs the heel? Randy Rose. Well, stop working on those other indie shows, Randy Rose. You're a world tag team champion with us. It's time to start acting like it. All right, let's see if we got anything else. The Menace is leaving Jim Crockett Promotions. They are just going to be, it's going to be catastrophic for them once he leaves. Oh, no. Larry Winters got hurt. Another fractured cheekbone. Bruiser Brody and David Schultz in the NWF. 
See, the NWF, they were around a long time, but I don't know how the hell they afforded to pay these guys. Windy City held a show called Caged Ambition. How could ambition be caged? That's counterproductive. I'm telling you, everybody, they got some really stupid names for shows. And someday I would like to delete them all and then replace them with simple names like Live Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Tonight, that kind of stuff. So it looks like Windy City's naming some stupid stupid team names too. Now, Jimmy Holiday was part of a really good team, so I don't understand why he'd be tagging with somebody else, but then again, I don't understand how the computer does any of this stuff. Mad Max mixed it up with our guy, Sonny Rogers. Mad Max, also known as Eli the Eliminator, not a bad, not a bad worker. Big guy, pretty nasty brawler. I've seen him uh, do some independent work where he had some bloodbaths and cage matches. One was against Jim Neidhart. So, well, good for our little brothers there, Windy City. We have an agreement with them. International. Chris Adams retains the heavyweight title. This is another one that I'm not sure how they're staying afloat. They're probably not. Yeah, they're hurting. They're hurting. Kowalski's hurting. Let's see how National's doing. National's making money. I totally stand corrected. National is making money. How's Windy City doing? Windy City's making money. Good for them. See if there's anything else of note here. Oh, we got a Saturday night's main event. Andre the Giant beats Coco Beware. That's totally a uh, Saturday night main event match, no doubt. Another six man. They like their six man six mans. Pretty decent card. Got a ninety one overall. They sold out uh, the Ocean Center in Florida. How we do on Prism? Steamboat and Hogan beat Volkoff and Roberts. Like I said, it looks like they had Roberts. Make a heel turn here. Heart Foundation over the Killer Bees. Good stuff. Good match overall. Let's do a title check. See how everybody's doing. The tag title's doing well. It's got a nice score. Let's see how the women's is doing. Oh yeah, we're up with that feud between Richter. And Martel. Uh, I also want to tell you I introduced storylines here. Let's clean this one up. Since I gave an extra space here. But that's the storylines that we added. And in the Von Rotschke and Duncan one, we also put Slater and McDaniel, the two guys' partners in there too. So we can have some fun with this on television and stuff like that to help it to help it go. Sheik and Robinson got themselves a feud going here. So, everything's looking good here, folks. Both our, our two main feuds are really hot. So, this is good stuff. So, all right, folks. I think that uh, closes it out for us for this episode. As usual, if you haven't already, please give us a like. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We have a video that comes out every day, okay? Um, every single day, it's either going to be an introduction video or it's going to be one of these videos, but you can rest assured that every day, Brad Drake and Brad Drake promotions are going to provide you with a fresh video to enjoy the 1987 super mod. And if you enjoy the 1987 super mod and you play it, please visit us on facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 super mod that's facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 super mod and for those of you that don't have the save yet and you would like it please visit braddrake.net slash contact let me know i will be more than happy to send you the link to the google drive page where you can get not only the database but also the picture pack for version 6 remember version 7 is due out in march and i have been doing a ton of work on it it is going to be outstanding. All right, folks, that's it for me for now. Take care, and I'll see you next time.